This video is designed to help you get started writing written reports for the statistics course. So here we are in, uh, in one shell for the statistics course. Find, find where your modules are. Open that up. Let's work on the written report for chapter 2. So we'll open that up and look at the instructions for that written report. We'll open that. I'm often going to be interested in copying something from one of these PDF files. For some reason, in, at least in my computer, when the file is displayed in a browser, it's hard to copy information from there. Um, so you might uh, just download the, the uh, PDF file and open it in another form. So here's the instructions for the written report. Um, uh, essentially, these details for the to include in the written report are always the same. You need to have a title. You need to have your name. You have to have some other information. So I'm really interested in in remembering these problems right here. So let's let's get started in writing our report. I'm going to copy that and open a a word processor. The word processor I'm using is LibreOffice. That's an open source. It's a, it's a free um, word processor that you can install on your computer. Likely you're using Word. Uh, LibreOffice uh, is kind of an open source version of Word. The instructions said that we needed to have a title. Uh, Chapter 2 written report is a great title here. Um, so maybe we'd want to format that as a title. We're supposed to list the author's name, so format that however you'd like. I'll just kind of center it over there. And remember that we copied what was going to be in the report. There was going to be those three, three problems, so it might be handy to list at the start what's going to be there. Now, I need to find that problem. That's problem 2.1. That's chapter 2, section 1, problem 4. So I've navigated back to the course. I'm looking in here and finding module 2. And it's in the chapter remix. It's in the textbook. So I'm going to open that. Once again, because I might be want to, wanting to copy something from this, it might be convenient to, co to uh, download this PDF and open it in another form so it will be easy to, easier to copy content from it. So here we are looking at that Chapter 2 Remix. I'm just going to start scrolling down here. There's Chapter 2.1. I need to scroll down until I get to the Chapter 2.1 Homework. So there's a section 2.1 homework, and we needed to find problem number four. It's right here. I want to copy that problem number four. Copy it. And you'll notice that, that here right in, the, in that PDF file, there's a, a video about problem number four that could help us understand how to complete that as well. So you might want to look at that video. But for right now I'm I'm copying this problem number four and I'm going to paste that into my document. So there's my word processor and there's problem number four. I may have to do some reformatting here to rearrange this so that it looks the way that we want it to be. So there I copied the problem problem number four and uh, and reformatted things so that it so that it looks reasonable and just to kind of help here this is really problem 2.1.4 okay so in this section I'm going to come up with a solution to to this problem and what I'm supposed to do is build a bar chart and a pie chart for this particular data. So here I've found an online compiler. 
let's uh, clean out this data and get ready to begin to do our work. So the data that we're interested in is is the heating source and the percentages for each of those heating sources. So let me start with uh, entering those percentages. That's just a list of values, so I want to put them into a vector. I'm going to use the concatenate function to do that. There are four values involved here. There are these four values right there. So now my script is going to build that, um, that vector. And um, I like to have, have fairly short names here because I'm going to have to type them so often. So I'm going to abbreviate that percent. The other information that we were interested in here the, is, is the type of fuel that was involved or, or the heating source. So maybe that would be a better name there. This is a categorical variable and so the things need to be characters. So I put all of those words in, uh, in parentheses. So we had 15.3% uh, in electricity, 46.3% in fuel oil, 35, and so on. Now we were supposed to do a bar plot of those percents, so that's easy enough to do. So now if I uh, run that script, then I got some errors. Let me look and see what they are. Oh, you see I made a typo error there. There's, I, do, I need to have that name be the same as this name. Okay, so let's run that script. Oh, did you see the other error? This is supposed to be a comma right here. Okay, so that little bit of debugging. I'm running the script, and there's the, the bar plot. Okay, it doesn't have any title on it. It doesn't have anything listed over here as to what the, the label is for the y-axis or the label down here. We learned in class that often we can find out how to do this stuff by just doing a search for... Um, our bar plot. That search returns lots of tutorials and other kinds of things. Often looking at the documentation is a good place to look. And if you look at that documentation, it shows all the options that are available here. And remember that main right now is equal to null that's what this part is saying so there's nothing in main but the main is the 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 title if you remember this data is the household heating sources that might be a good title so i'm going to edit my script here and so it's going to plot that vector and i'm going to put this on another line here So I want my title to be Household Heating Sources. Now notice each one of these items need to, inside of bar plot, need to, need to be separated by a comma. So there's the percent. This could all be written on one line, but it's easier for me to read it if I uh, arrange it the way that it is. Main is going to be the Household Heating Sources. Bar plot has to has to have its argument start with the parentheses and end with the parentheses. So I'm just kind of lining them up that way so that I can see what's happening. So in this one I need to scroll down and run that script. And sure enough, now I've got a, a heading there. I'd like to put a label on the a Y label and an X label. So to do that, I need to again separate these options with the comma. So I'm going to put in a Y label. So I've added those two options, the Y label and the X label. Let's come down and run that script. And sure, there, sure enough, there we've got the percentage on the Y axis and the fuel type. Now I'd like to have the names of each of these bars. So, 
So let's go back and look at the documentation for bar plot. And oh yeah, remember, it's the names.arg which is going to name those bars. So I need to put in that option. So I need to have a vector here that contains these names. Oh, we've already built it up here. We could just call it sources, uh, source, because that's what we named that vector. Remember, each one of these options have to be separated by a comma. And uh, so let's see how that works. Oh, great. Okay. Now, depending on on which R compiler you use, these words might end up being too long and so they don't all fit in there. You might have to shorten the names to get them to fit. Now that's getting to be a pretty reasonable graph. We've, we've told what the percentage is over here, we've told what's happening here, we've named the graph, and uh, so somebody could read that graph fairly well at this point. There are other options that you can can play with uh, to fancy this up a little bit. For example, you can add some color. Uh, the command for, for color is COL, and that's an option. I'm going to make it light blue. Now when I run the, the code, it looks like this. Now I want to have all of this information in my report. So we can copy the script showing what we did. and paste that script into uh, our document. Oops, I didn't want to have all of that bolded. So clean up the formatting so that it's looking good and maybe I want to single space that instead of having a one and a half space. Okay, so now I've got the, the uh, script in there and I want to show the results of that script as well. So I'm going to go back to my uh, to my R compiler and look down here at this. I can right click this and copy that image and paste that image into here. Maybe I don't like the size of that so we might take it and, and scale it down. So I might say here I want my report to be readable script for bar plot. And then I also need to build a, down underneath here, I'll need to build a script for a pie chart. So I want to have the script for the pie chart and the results for that. Building the script for the pie chart. The pie chart is going to be uh, plotting this same data, so I'm just going to modify this uh, script. I, I might want to look up the, the documentation for a pie chart. So I did a search for RPI. They've got uh, a bunch of tutorials here. I'm hoping that they've got some documentation here. So I found uh, the pi function documentation. I'm going to so let's so let's do a pi of percent. Let's run that. And sure enough, there we've got the the pie chart. But these things are just I, I need to have the names there. I need to have a a main title. Household of the heating sources is a good name. Let's go down and run that script. And sure enough, now we've got that. We'd like to label these. We'd like to, to label what the slices are. And I suspect that that's going to be labels is what's going to do that. And we already have this vector source. So um, I'm just going to have labels be equal to what source is. We'll run that script. Ah, not bad. OK getting to be a, a fairly reasonable plot. So we want to copy this script, 
paste it into our document. Come back to the compiler, copy our picture, uh, copy the image, and paste that into our document, and maybe do some resizing and some nice formatting stuff.